All right, uh, let's get going. Let's get to it. Y'all have enough fun, dancing, laughing, all that. Let's get to the word because we still got to live for the glory of God. Can I get a witness, somebody? That all right? Um, I, did a, I did a talk one t- uh, sometime earlier this year called The Ten Red Flags. One of the most watched videos we've ever had. If you've not seen it, you need to go see it. Ten Red Flags. How do you know that you should get out of a relationship quickly, all right? So I'm not doing that today. That was my red flag talk, okay? Um, and so some of you, some of you uh, are in a relationship now and you need to get out, all right? Because it's a red, you've seen red flags. And you're going to tell me in about two years that the dude is crazy or that the girl is crazy. And I'm going to tell you that you saw it and you kept on going. You saw it, you saw the relationship, you know it was a mess. You saw how he or her treated their ex and you still kept, you thought you could save them. You thought it would be different with you, so you, your heart told your brain to come up with some reasons why this red flag won't happen to you. And in light of that, in about two years, you're going to get a divorce, and you're going to say, well, God will forgive me, and you're going to plead the grace of God. When you should be stuck, but because you got married to be happy, you'll get a divorce to be happy. So, we're not talking about red flags. And what I'm going to talk about today is how do you know when the relationship is a good one? We're going to talk about green flags. How you know when this the one? How you know when you're at dinner with her, when you're at lunch with him, you're not at breakfast because you shouldn't be at his or her house that early. So how do you know? <laughs> if, if, if you at breakfast at 7 in the morning, it's a red flag. It ain't a green flag. It means somebody shouldn't be at somebody's house that early in the morning. But the problem sometimes is that you get so used to, to live in raggedy that you don't even realize you live in raggedy anymore. You get so used to the culture normalizing sin that you just think it's normal now. Many of you are still struggling uh, because of past relationships and past hurts. So you used to have somebody that don't talk a lot and you ran to somebody that talk a lot. And instead of being balanced, you jumped all the way over to the other side. And that's not a green flag. That's a red flag. So I'm going to talk about 13. 13 um, flags that is our indications that you're headed in the right direction and that your relationship is healthy. Everybody should have a handout. Does everybody have a handout? Did they give them to you already? They did? Why not? Okay, well, everybody give them. Oh, they wanted. I was going to go last, but I'm not. So give, that, give those handouts out for me, please. Everybody got 13. Don't look. You know what? I shouldn't give you them. Have you given them out yet? All right, go. Because y'all going to look to the end before I get there. All right, can I have one? How about giving me one so we can talk about it? Is that all right? Thank you. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you for today. Uh, I pray that you'll guide us now as we walk through um, healthy signs that are theologically accurate, relationally accurate, spiritually accurate, so that we can become who you're calling us to be. God, I get it. You get it. That this is the second most important relationship in our lives Therefore, God, will you help us to be wise? Will you help us to be prudent? Um, Hang with the wise, and you'll become wise. The companions of fools suffer harm. Will you teach us how to to hang with wise people? In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said? All right, here we go. Um, I've talked about this, but I need to remind you. There are hula hoops. Let me remind you of something this will help in every relationship, professionally, relationally, spiritually. Here's the, here's the principle. It is your assignment to stay in your hula hoop. It is your assignment to stay here. It is not your assignment to jump into somebody else's hula hoop. If they got a hula hoop, they got their own drama, they got their own issue, God bless them. Your job is not to fix them. Just because you can fix your kids don't mean you should fix your spouse. There is one Jesus and you're not him. 
Jesus' job is to transform people, not yours. If you're entering into a relationship thinking, I will fix him or I will fix her, you're already in a red flag. Your job is to manage your own hula hoop. Therefore, you get as healthy as you can and you pursue as much health as you can and you will attract somebody that is pursuing the same kind of health spiritually, emotionally, relationally as you are. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, it is a massive sign and not a green one. If you are trying to come over here to argue a point over, your job is to stay over here, let them tell you the truth, you believe what they're saying, and if you cannot help them, you'll walk away. Your job is, to, is not to fix them, it is to fix you. Because you are the problem, not them. I told the group this earlier, whenever somebody come in my office and tell me that they're, they're, the person they're dating is crazy and they didn't know that they were that crazy, I tell them, you're crazy too. Because crazy attracts crazy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me please. All I'm trying to say to you today is this, is that if you, if the last four people you dated are crazy, take a hint. Like attracts like. I can't believe it. They cussed me out and just left me. That's because you might not be a cusser outer, but you love hanging out with people who cuss and walk away. You've allowed it. So don't blame the person. Blame yourself. There is something wrong with you that you need to go help. Quit blaming everybody else. Any relationship you're in that goes south, blame yourself. You attracted it to you. Say it. So, how, what are some of the signs now of a green flag? Let's start from the bottom up. Go to the next page. Let's start from the bottom up. Number one says, you both realize purity leads to clarity and strive to remain pure. If you're in a relationship and you're arguing that if I don't sleep with him, he gonna leave me and go to somebody else, you just shared how valuable you think you are. So if, if, if in order to maintain her or him, you gotta sleep with them, then what you're actually saying is, I am not valuable enough that they would want to wait. So you're speaking to your own foolishness. That's why you're doing it. And so, purity gives you the best opportunity to see clearly. So if both of you are trying to maintain your purity, it means you can see as, the, you have the, the greatest possibility to see as clearly as you possibly can. When you muddle the waters, no, you're not seeing clearly anymore. When you, when you, when you, when you, when you get pregnant and then you want to marry the person, the reason you do that is, for all the wrong reasons. Now you don't want to look bad. Now you care about how you look more than a lifetime together. Now you care more about, well, are people going to accept me because I'm pregnant? Instead of saying, when you slept with her the first time, when there was no baby, you should have felt guilty then. And you should have said, Lord, confess. I, for I confess, forgive me, please. But you didn't because you didn't get caught. But now that there's a baby showing, all of a sudden, now you want to be guilty. Now, now you want to look ashamed. No, no, no. You should look ashamed first. The reason you didn't look ashamed first is because, listen, it's because you really did, your heart, you really didn't think it was that bad. You were just saying, oh, okay. Uh. Let me get a little deeper. I got to watch it. This is being televised. Um. When you were fooling around and juices were flowing, you're doing it. Why are you shocked? You're doing it. Whether alone or with some. <laughs> let him use you. Let him use you. Let, let, let him use you. This is just number one. We got 12 more to go. <laughs> oh 
you got to realize that what your God wants for you and what he wants for me is for us to follow his precepts. That's your job and that's mine. And don't normalize it like because you think everybody else is doing it, it means it's okay. Do you notice your standard is never Jesus? Your standard is always your girlfriend or your boys. That's who you want to compare yourself to. You don't want to compare yourself to the Apostle Paul. Mm -mm. <laughs> you don't want to compare yourself to Jesus. Uh -uh. You just want to be this much better than your friends. So if they hang around with fools every day, if you hang around with a fool once a week, you think you're godly. <laughs> you just don't like when nobody tell you the truth, don't you? <laughs> Ooh, I gotta watch it. I gotta watch it. I gotta watch it. I, I, <laughs> because the people you hang out with, ooh, just give it up every single day. Because you wait two weeks before you give it up, don't mean you're better. Number 12. <laughs> you both are passionately pursuing Jesus. You both, here's a green flag. You both love Jesus and you're passionately pursuing him. What does that mean? All that means is um, that, that it's not good enough for you for her to just go to church. It's not good enough for you for them to just say, well, I'm spiritual. No, do you love Jesus? And actually, I'm not even going to ask you. I want to see it. Don't tell me. Let me see it. Let me see you walk with God. Let me see you talk to God. And let me see you love musing with God. Do, here's a question. Now, can I see your prayer closet? That's what, do you have a prayer closet? Do you have somewhere where you and Jesus hang out? Because if you don't, then when I go buck wild, you going to go to somebody else instead of go to your closet. See, we don't know what to look for. You go in the house looking at, oh, let me see the car she drive or he drive. Oh, let me see what kind of cutlery they have. Let me see what's on the wall. You're looking for the wrong thing. All that's the wrong thing. You must look, where do you do, where do you do battle for Jesus? And if you don't have one, why, why you buy a whole house and ain't none of them rooms for Jesus? You got a nice, fancy apartment. You want everybody to come and show what you can do and how you can cook. Show them how you pray. Show them, show them what's responsible for who you are today. The reason I am the person I am today, you need to tell them, is because of this room right here. Without this room, I wouldn't have made it. Some of you don't have no room. Some of you don't even have the Bible. Some of you don't even pick it up until the bottom drops out. And that's the only time you go to Jesus. Can you imagine being married to that person? Let me tell you what that means. That means when everything goes down, they're going to somebody else. They're not going to Jesus. Because it's never been a habit for them to go to Jesus. It's why what Daryl was saying was, so if you show faithfulness on this side, then I know you're going to be faithful on the other side. But if you give it... What, mm, why is it that it's okay... When, when, you, when you cheat on God, but not okay, when your ex cheat with somebody else. Somebody over this side, somebody over this side. They didn't get it. Hold on, I'm coming. Why is it okay when, when the dude's sleeping with you, it's cool? Right? You're good. Oh, yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, just, it feels so good. Yeah, yeah, all right. And you're happy and you ain't mad. Why is it? But you cheating on God. Because God said, don't do that. Why is it now when he cheats with somebody else, you won't burn down his house? <laughs> God should burn your house down. He should give you what you're giving him. So if you don't want, if you don't want to get mad when he does it, then when you do it to God, you shouldn't get mad either. But if you're pissed when he does it, then be pissed 
when you do it against God. Number 11. Some of y'all don't even know the fruit of the Spirit. First of all, this says um, you both exhibit fruits of the Spirit. Spirit should be capitalized, by the way. Um, fruits of the Spirit. But what are those? What, what is that? Love, joy, peace, patience. Stop right there. Patience. <laughs> Instead of having a list of, he can't, he's too short. Instead of having a list of, well, you know, he got to wear this kind of clothes and he's got to be designer this. How about just a list of, is he patient? Is he patient? Well, he's showing you he's patient if he's willing to wait. So look how crazy we are. We know that you're not following God and you're not patient, but all of a sudden you think it's going to change when it comes to you. You see it. Blow it up. Make it big. That's big as you can so you can see. So when it happens, you don't get mad. Blow it up. Fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, peace. Why, why would, if somebody never have peace, why would you want to spend the rest of your life with that? What is wrong with you? Every time you have to, if you got to be their cheerleader every day, it's okay, you can get up this morning, it's going to be good. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It's going to be all right. And, and by the way, and by the way, you love doing it. As if it's not going to come around and back. Okay, you think you're not going to get worn out one day? I say, oh God, can you cheer me on? But yet still we walk around like it's fine because you want to be the savior of the world again. And you don't see that you're only attracted to people who want saving. Which means you can't deal with somebody who don't want saving because then what are you to do? You don't have nothing to do. How about your purpose? How about what God's called you to do? And your calling is not to walk around and fix everybody. Fruit of the Spirit. That's a good list. You want a list? Look at that list. That's the only one the Bible allows. Not to, if God brought a dude who was 5'2", you'd say, that's not God's will for you. <laughs> You're in the dead center of God's will. But you'd be like, no, I, 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 the, the devil, not today. Not today, Satan. Not today. That ain't it. You would much rather six foot two buck wild crazy than five foot two love Jesus. That's not God's will. I know his will. I can see it. It is six foot two. 245 pounds. Fruit of the Spirit. Number 10. Come on, for real, let's go. Number 10. Red flag, green flag, green flag, number 10. Green flag, number 10. Since you know, you know this, that all a marital relationship is, is the opportunity for you to see your worst side. That's all it is. And whether or not you can serve somebody and love somebody and honor somebody when you don't want to. That's all marriage is. Can you, they're the closest person to you. They smell your funk. All the time. And you got to serve them when you know the worst about them. Let me say it another way, ladies. You have to honor them when they're not worthy of being honored. And many of you don't want to do it. You should practice that. I don't like this person. Still honor them. Because that's what you have to do in marriage. You got to honor them when you don't like them. And if you think you're going to like them every single day and it's going to be sweet melodies, you're woefully deceived. Therefore, 
you have to practice the art of selfishness. Every time you get the opportunity, every single day you should, every single day, you should do something you don't want to do. Because that's all marriage is. Selflessly putting the other person before you. If you don't want to do that, then stay single. Just, just enjoy the season God has you in. But don't change it and then make the other person miserable. Enjoy the season. No, for real, for real, for real. If you don't love, practice it every day. I got, I got to put them before me. I got to put them before me. I got to put them before me. That's, that's, that is what it is. No, I hope you marry somebody who wants to put you before them. Because Lord knows you're going to have to put them before you. And if they don't want to do it, then boy, it is 100%. This is what it's going to look like to you. Forget the green flag, put a cross on it. Taking up your cross daily and following Jesus. So I don't care how sweet she is, how cute she is, how big her butt is, how big her chest is, how ripped his, his, his abs are. If they selfish, there is a cross to carry. Now listen, you're going to carry the cross anyway. At least minimize how much stuff is on the cross. But some of you be like, it don't matter, I can carry my cross. I'm going to get, oh, okay. <laughs> you finna get sick of the cross. <laughs> you finna get sick of it and say, I'm done with this cross. <laughs> and the reason that's important is because I'm telling you, many of you don't look at it and you just think everything is going to just work out miraculously. When you don't realize that it is a life of selflessness. So get used to it. I used to tell people and they used to fight me every day. So I get a roommate. They'll teach you selfishness before you get married. Can you imagine if you spent all 40 years of your life, no, from, from your left to your parents' house, all 20 years of your life, uh, single, uh, uh, in a house by yourself, doing whatever the heck you want. And then you add somebody to that <laughs> who get to do whatever they want. It is a nightmare if you don't get used to somebody getting on your nerve and you have to accommodate them to you. Just get used to it. It's not, that's what it is. It really, really is. Number, 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 what number are we at? Nine? Read it with me, everybody. If you got to impress people every single time, it's, a, it's too much work. Golly. When she, when she has to, when every time you go somewhere, bro, she has to dress you. And she, well, no, 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 don't wear that, don't wear that, don't wear that, don't wear that, don't wear that. I mean, you're coming with me. If you're coming with me, you got to do the part. And so here's what I want you to do. Actually, you know what, let me just take you shopping so you can wear what I want you to wear because you are now a representative of me. <laughs> bro, I'm just telling you right now, just take off. Take off. <laughs> Run. Because if you are the dude that just loves sweats and you love to just have your little sweat, no, that's not professional enough. If she starts telling you now, she's going to tell you for the rest of your life. You're going to be like a fish that got caught. <laughs> <laughs> for the rest of your life. I'm telling you. That is why you must be able to be who you are. Don't, 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 don't become somebody else for them. It will wear you out staying that way. It just will. Ladies, yeah, I always want to see you in this. This all you want to see me in? Yeah, nothing. Stop it, Pastor E. Stop it, stop it, stop it. I hear you back there. I hear you. <laughs> if everything, he only wants to see you in this. Bro, maybe you're a little bit obsessed with the outside. Maybe it's time we're focused a little bit on the inside. By the way, if he's that obsessed with the outside, follow the logic now then maybe it's not just your outside he's obsessed with. Amen. So, so, so don't walk into the relationship with such a low esteem 
that you feel so great that he wants to see you in this and how great you look in this and marvel at how much he loves you when you're wearing this because he might be also sending another indication that wherever he sees that kind of attire it will pull him there too I think this side over here, I need, need some more help. I'm coming back to them. I'm coming back to them. <laughs> number, what number are we at? Number eight. There is grace and forgiveness in your relationship. Now, let me tell you this. You must always find out and talk about past relationships. Because you'll find out if they err on the side of grace or if they err on the side of judgment. And you want to know that you are married to somebody who is grace-oriented. Here's what the Bible says. As much as you give it, God will give it to you. Forgive as you forgive me. So if somebody doesn't have an orientation of, of grace, mercy, and forgiveness, and they're that hard, that means you're going to live in a glass house. Which means every move you make will be under scrutiny. Mm. That means every time you, uh, not there, not, not, uh. oh my God, just let the, stay in your own hula hoop. By the way, by the way, somebody going to get in trouble. Don't go tell nobody that don't go to this church or never heard this. Stay in your own hoop. They don't know what a hula hoop is. Oh my God. <laughs> you got to first teach it. So, so don't be like, stay in your hula hoop. That ain't mine. That's yours. They don't know. They don't know. So don't be going to lecture somebody else about the hula hoop theology. It ain't no theology, first of all. It's a principle. Okay? The idea is you're going to work on you. That's the whole idea. All I'm trying to suggest is that forgiveness and grace are significant parts of any healthy relationship. Therefore, let's make sure we're pursuing it and we're giving it. Number seven. Uh, you both value, I don't even know what to say. If you love the girl and the person that you're with don't love the girl, you're, go, you're going to be, you're, you're not equally yoked. You're going to be like, why am I at a 10 and they still at a 2? We met each other when we birth that we're at 2s. And I'm at a 10 now and you're at a 2. So you need to see progress in their own growth and development. That's what you're looking for. Are they growing? And if they're not growing, then you need to back up a little bit and say, don't ask them, because then they're going to grow for you. And then when they catch you, or caught, when you're caught, then they're going to stop growing. It's just like, if somebody don't like to work out, but when they meet you, they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> and all of a sudden, they want to work out. After they get you, you knew me when I was fat. I'm good. You good? Do you see what I'm saying? So don't, don't tell them, hey, do you think you ought to? Because then they're going to do, the motive is all jack. If, they, if it's what they naturally do, then it's an indication that whether you show up or not, that's what they're going to do. But too many of y'all like to fix people. So you say, oh yeah, let's do this together. I'll wake you up. Let's wake up at 4.30. Okay, I'll call you. I'll call you. You're running the whole show. So you're going to do it for the rest of your life. So then don't come to church talking about he's not a leader. He never was. No, you matter the church because you're not making him a leader. You better talk to him. Your sermon's too, too, too man-oriented, too female-oriented. You need to make it more man because they ain't lead. Ain't nobody can follow a parked car. And you need to make sure they lead in me because they don't know how to lead me. Knucklehead. They were never leading you. By the way, if they were, you wouldn't have married them. Because you love to lead everything. You don't know you're a woman that was raised to be independent and nobody showed you how to honor up and honor somebody else. And you didn't, need, you didn't even see necessary to ask anybody else for it, which is why now you show up in a relationship and you want to lead everything and then you have the audacity to say, he can't lead me. Nobody can lead you. Ain't nobody can lead you. Ask your boss. That's why you started your own company. My God. This is just some ramblings I got, y'all. I'm just, I'm just rambling. 
This, I can put a name beside every one of these numbers. Number six. You have healthy, lifelong friends. If the, if the person you date don't got no friends. <laughs> if the person you date don't have no friends that they can say, yeah, here go my fifth grade friend, here go my uh, 12th grade friend, here go my high school friend, here go my boy, and by the way, People, they're same sex, not other opposite sex. Just some friends that they, that they did life with. If every season they got to ruin and ruin every relationship, and you don't have no friends for 20, I'm not talking no friends that if you say, oh yeah, hi, how you doing? I'm talking friends you can call that you share deep stuff with each other. Even if they're not in the same city, you just know that's your boy and gentleman, and you just know you can talk and wrestle and reason together. If you don't got three, four, five of them, but everybody you know is in this season of your life? If they can't maintain a relationship, then why you think all of a sudden, magically, it's going to work with you? They got to have some friends. You need to go see them. That's a date. Let's get some of your friends that you used to have. Let's talk to them. Tell me, how were they in the past? Girl, if I were you, <laughs> and by the way, listen about the past because when you listen about the past, then it's going to tell you about their future. Yeah. I'm trying to help y'all. Right. Y'all be like, no, he don't have no friends, but I know why. I know. Stop it. Stop saying but. He don't have no friends. <laughs> Ain't no but. He traveled a lot everywhere he went out. He just traveled. So he don't have no friends. I'm his only friend. Number five, you care about what you can give more than what you can get. Don't, I've said this a hundred times, probably a thousand times. You don't marry for what you can get. Get that up here, please, and get that right here. You don't marry for what you can get. You marry for what you can give. Healthy people marry for what they can give. They don't marry for what they can get. So if you're at home thinking, man, if I just had, if I just had a, the right girl and she just looked just the right way, can you imagine when I step into the next office gathering we have and me and my boo, if, if you're thinking like that, so, so she is the, the prize that you've been looking for that will take you to your next promotion? Sometimes we don't even realize that we're, we're thinking like that. We just do it, and we don't even realize that. Oh, I mean, everybody else have theirs. If I just get mine, then maybe they'll give me the senior VP job. Maybe they actually might make me the president. This is what I need to do it. You don't even realize it, but you're, you're liking somebody for what they can give to you, not what you have the privilege of blessing them with. That's why you become the best you. So that you have the best that you can give to somebody, whoever it is that God wants to bless you with. But you must have it in your mind. It must be set. I am not getting married to get. I am getting married to get. If you're more consumed about the color of the eyes of the baby that you're going to have. <laughs> Y'all create. Y'all be like, ooh. Can't you? <laughs> oh, gosh. The babies are going to be so cute. <laughs> Is that what you're concerned about? Who say you're going to have babies? No, you're mad at God because you can't have no baby. Now you're blaming him for giving you the wrong spouse because you can't have no baby. But all of a sudden, what number are we at? Three? Four. You're both aware, oh God, you, we don't want to talk about this, of the five buckets and you're on your way to getting them refilled. You don't want to talk, just go on the website, there's this deal called Five Buckets that every person needs to be filled before the age of 12. If they're not filled, then for the rest of your life, you're gonna look for a relationship to fill them. 
I'm telling you, it's the most revelatory thing I've learned in the last five years. You must know which one you're short in and why it motivates you to get or why you're attracted to the person you're attracted to. There are five buckets and you must know them all. And if you have kids, you must raise your kids with all five in mind. One of them is called value. Do you think you're valued? The truth of the matter, most of us don't think we're valued. Most of us, that's why people hurt your feelings so much. They hurt your feelings because you don't think you're all that. And God has a word for you that you are. But because of the family of origin that you grew up in, you didn't get what God wanted to give to you. So because of that, now you're in a situation that you're in. Go get it and go listen to all five. There are five of them. And you, I, if you do nothing else, I'm begging you, go get all five, see what they are, and then have a strategy for you to fill them and then for your kids if you have kids yet. All right? Number three. Number three. Um, you spur one on. You spur, read it with me, everybody. You spur one on, on and help guide each other. Notice one another. Notice there is a sparring going on between both of you. It's not one person that's the lecturer and the other is the student. It is a, it is a shared experience of learning where you know that God, listen, God's calling you to something customized purpose that he has for you. Then he's calling you together, customized purpose that he has for you together. Here's the problem. Off, you should date somebody and say, mm -mm, I cannot get to where God wants me to go if I date you. you that should be a criteria. I mean, find it that I'm up. I mean, ha! And you'd be like, mm -mm, purpose is bigger than beauty. But the truth of the matter is most people wouldn't say that. They'd be like, God will work it out. That's what you'll say. But you, you must know yours, and then you must be on your way. And then when somebody show up in your life, now you're trying to ask God, how will your purpose get done with both of us being together? Most people never ask it. Can my purpose get done with you? Or, this is what happened with most, a lot of, a lot of people that go into ministry this happened to, and a lot of people that are executives this happened to, this is what it looked like. You, you, marry, you find somebody, you marry them, and then you got to drag them everywhere you go. <laughs> I, as God is my witness, because you can't take him in some of the rooms you go into. Because the rooms you go into are so sophisticated, but you are so desperate, so you marry a buffoon, and now you got to take him everywhere you go. And now, you actually, now you don't even want to take him. So it's just like you were single. You said, no, 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 I mean, you don't even tell him that you're going somewhere anymore. Because you're afraid they'll embarrass you. Because in a moment of weakness, you know, it's not no weakness, in a moment of desperation, you marry somebody just to deal with your emotions when you should have dealt with that on your own. And now you're in this big position, yeah. VP of sales. <laughs> and you're dealing with a knucklehead that can't go nowhere with you. Because as soon as he opened his mouth, the rest of your coworkers will be like, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Oh God, oh God, I feel so sorry. I feel so sorry. I gotta go. Or, or fellas, equal opportunity. You, 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 she fine. I mean, fine. She cute. She got all of the, every button she can push, she push it for you. Every feature is fine. I mean, she fine. She fine. She fine. She, I don't know what else to do. She uh, fine. I mean, she fine. But she has spent so much time with surgery and lashes and... <laughs> that she don't have no sense. So now you carry her everywhere, and then, and then all, you say, all your friends are saying about you is, oh God, I, I'm glad she could look good, because Lord have mercy, ain't nothing upstairs, not a doggone thing upstairs, not a doggone thing. You talk to her, so <laughs> yeah, no, he's just great. <laughs> You don't have two sentences to say, woman of God. <laughs> but you weren't interested in that. You're just interested in how they look. Sir. Now, when you have incredibly smart executives around your wife, now you feel something wrong. Now you want to redo. 
Let's keep moving. Come on, I got to go. I got to go. Which, what number are we at? One? Um, you have full trans... Ooh. Ooh. Now, let me help you out. I got to go. Let, let's, let's, get, let's wrap this up. You have full transparency and honesty. Here's the problem with this. If somebody's telling you the whole story on the first three dates, run away from them, please. If they're dumping the truck on the first three times you meet them, like, oh my God, let me tell you, well, when I was 14, I had an STD, and when I was 18, um, when I was 18, somebody molested me, and this is the second date. Joker, this might not work out. So if it don't work out, Joker, no, everybody, everybody know your business. What is wrong with you? Don't tell everybody everything up front. Well, Pastor, the last time I waited two years, and then he put a ring on it, and then when I told him, then he didn't. He took the ring off. So here's what you're doing: you're overcompensating. So now you overcompensated by telling them, "Well, let me just get it out of the way to see if you're gonna like me or not." That's your issue, not theirs. So you 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 give an appropriate amount of information for the level of the intimacy. Y'all love to just, well, let me tell you, um, so, uh, just take my hula hoop. Take everything about it. I just want to give you it all. Run away as fast as you can because if they'll do it to you, it means they've done it to 15 other people. So now when they see you walking, mm, mm, I know what he got. Because you talk too much. Calm down. Transparency is appropriate. Honesty is appropriate. But in due time, not after the first three, four, or five gatherings. Can I get a witness? Yeah. All right, last one, last one, then we do. Last one, last one, I gotta go. Um, you talk for, ooh, ain't this the truth? You talk for hours without knowing time has passed. It, the conversation just goes. By the way, by the way, not one way, two way. Because some of y'all shy ones, you don't like to talk, so you just love when they talk. Listen, come here, listen. You, you just like, oh, yeah, just do whatever you want. I just like to hear you talk. Oh, my gosh, you're so good. I mean, you're so fascinating. You're so funny. I like to hear you. You're so funny. <laughs> it's going to get on your last nerve when they never ask you, what's up? What are you thinking? Because you think it's up. Just because you don't say it don't mean you ain't thinking. you smart. you thinking. You need somebody that will ask you about what you're thinking and pull it out of you, not just somebody who wants the mouthpiece. Because if they do. That opposite thing is what will cause you to get a divorce. Oh, I have a concept. Let me show you. Many people think opposites attract, and, it, and they do. But you got to be careful. Because the same thing that you love them is what you leave them for. So don't just be like, oh my gosh, I mean, it's, it just fits. My yin and my yang. It just fits. Oh my God. I do a little heat. That I, I, it's all good. The thing that you love, that's the opposite, is what 90% of people get divorced for. So be careful about that opposite. I'm not saying it should be opposite, but be careful because too many times you go there and then you don't realize how over time it gets on your last nerve. Do you, why don't you ever ask me a question? Do you ever want to know what I think or you just want to keep talking? And then you won't get mad. Well, but he never asked. You never wanted him to for the, his entire life until now. Therefore, when you're in the relationship, ask, do you ever consider what I thought about that? And the truth is, he should say, no, nor do I want to know. I just like talking. Because that's how the person will be in 20 years when the kids are gone and you don't have a relationship. Because you really stay together for the kids. I'm done. That's it. Bye. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't be an A that can't stand on your own. Be an M that can stand on your own and wait for God to provide the other person who can stand on their own so you can be who God's calling you to be. Love y'all. All right, we're done.